I appreciate your confidence in me, your love for me, your respect for what I have done over 30 plus years, and I am honored, deeply, deeply honored. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. When we have this space, I said, is it too big? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> every single day on this campaign. And it is absolutely amazing to me, all of the terrific people I have met throughout the community. I know some of you have been saying, who is this woman, Yvonne Spicer? And this woman came here when she was 23 years old, armed with a bachelor's and master's degree, ready to teach at Framingham Public Schools. And I was hired by Gus Lucarelli. And some of you that have been around Framingham for a while, you might know who Gus is. Uh, Gus was, first of all, during my interview, he was very impressed with me. But I, he said to me very candidly, he said, I, first of all, have never met a woman that teaches industrial arts. <laughs> and, and, and he said, I'm, in, I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. So what happened, I had my interview that day. I That evening, I got a phone call at my friend's house who I was visiting. I was just visiting a friend for the weekend. And he called and offered me the job. I went to work in Framingham Public Schools the next day. <laughs> and I was here for the weekend. I had, you know, just having fun. And I didn't, even, I didn't even think. I said, well, maybe I'll get a job. And it has been an incredible journey for me over the last uh, 32 years of living in Framingham. But also trying to think about, you know, first of all, coming in as a first-year teacher, I had to earn the trust of the children. Because I knew my children could care less about what I knew and my lesson plans, because I was quite prepared. Life events, I'm going to do this on day one, day two. And, but they could care less about that until, until they knew I cared deeply about them. And I learned that early on in my life, um, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Actions speak louder than words. And I can honestly say my actions in my professional life have spoken a lot louder than the words that I may say. So I don't always say something, and then I say, watch me, show, uh, watch what I do, and then you'll learn. And this was something that was instilled in me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Emergency warning. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, that's a question. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, we try. <laughs> uh, we'll make it. And, uh, so one of the things that I learned early on in life from my family and my, my parents is certainly that being a person that can be trusted. Integrity is everything. Because if you lose someone's trust and they can't believe in you, then you've lost everything. And I've led my life that way. And I've done everything I've done in with integrity. So that's something that's been very important. I bring a unique advantage to this job. Um, first of all, as some of our prior speakers have said, I've had experience on the job and doing things that have prepared me very well to be the mayor of Framingham. I have something so no other candidate has. I have had a seat at the table. I have been at the table a long time. And part of being at the table, it has allowed me to have direct connections with people in our state government, but also at a federal level, I've had that connection. I currently sit on Governor uh, <coughs> Charlie Baker's uh, STEM Council, and I was originally appointed by Governor Deval Patrick. So it's a bipartisan thing, and I still get to work across the aisle. I'm an advisor to the National Governors Association, and these are governors around the country who come together to try to figure out strategies on how to build capacity in their respective states, in particular in the area of STEM education. I also sit on the Mass Business Roundtable, uh, another entity that I just had a meeting with yesterday, uh, the STEM Council, and so I saw one of my colleagues on the Roundtable as well. And I am also an advisory board member to the State Treasurer's Office uh, of Economic Empowerment, 
So I sit on that board and I have served under two treasurers, Steve Grossman as well as Jeff Goldberg, who is the current uh, treasurer. Um, so from day one, I'm ready to hit the ground running. Um, I have the I am the candidate that brings a lot to this job already because I have been leading for a long time. I have been making decisions as, as my boss has told me sometimes, you know, he's like, you, you may not like what you, you get, but you're going to get it too. So <laughs> bring it. Um, but I do make decisions very possible. As the people's mayor, I will make it my job to engage Framingham residents to participate in our new city. This is our city. We get to decide what it's going to be like. We get to sit at the table and give me ideas on where we need to go and build that strategic plan for our community. Yes, I realize that we, we were at a different crossroads. And some people want it to be a town and some people want it to be a city. We are a city. Let's move forward together and be the best city we can possibly be. <laughs> I'm in this race for mayor with a good pulse of Framingham. As a 32-year resident and a former teacher and administrator, a realtor, I used to sell real estate, and that's how I got to know a lot about Framingham. Tell me where you live. I'll remember. I don't always remember your name, but I know your address. <laughs> um, town meeting member, and I've been on Ways and Means. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, I intentionally, when I joined town meeting, I intentionally joined the Ways and Means because I wanted to learn and interact with all facets of government. And that was something that has been phenomenal for me. It is the one committee that I see that we have to go deep and learn a lot about all of the issues and the background behind them. And oftentimes needing more information to make final decisions on how we're going to vote as a committee. But it has been phenomenal for me to have that experience. As your first mayor, I'll make sure we begin a city that is inclusive of everyone. That is the beauty of the town that I, we live in. I came to Framingham because of its diversity. And I stayed in Framingham because of its diversity. The, the reality is, is that sometimes all of our residents don't feel like they're part of the mix. In this administration, everyone will have a seat at the table. All of us. Regardless of background, regardless of race, regardless of language, everyone gets a seat at the table. As mayor, I get a lot of autonomy. And it's autonomy that I will not abuse. Because as I read this charter, yes, those that crafted it were very candid that yes, we have some spaces that we need to grow in that charter. But I'm going to be very careful about how we build our community and follow the charter in a way that allows me to engage all of those folks that have been a part of town government for a very long time. There's a lot of committed people in this community, and I want to make sure they stay committed and involved. So that would be my commitment. And as, as we start to think about our future, I think about what's best for Framingham. And just to give you a, a, a snippet, and some of this, I know because in the essence of time, I'm being respectful of time, but I'm going to talk about one of the key things for me that is always undergirding a community, and that's economic development. Framingham's history is rooted in manufacturing, such as Avery Dennis at the mill, General Motors. Some of you remember when General Motors was in town. When I arrived here, we had General Motors. That has transitioned. And one of the things that has transitioned is ways in which we work as a people. We have to be in a place that we're not so dependent on development to support our growth in our community. We can't always look to them. We have to think about the jobs that we can create that are clean energy kinds of jobs that are supporting our community. And so I'm going to bring what I know best, which is STEM education. Because if yeah. you are doing technology, 
and moving this agenda forward. And part of that is thinking about economic development and working very closely with our Department of Economic Development and thinking about ways in which we can invite businesses into framing it. clean technologies that don't uh, increase the uh, carbon footprint, but are actually high wage jobs they're having for people. And companies such as uh, uh, Genzyme and Santa Fe are here already. And they're here, but there are other companies that would like to come here. And my job is to, as mayor of Framingham is to try to bring those companies here, that we are employing our people, we're training them in house, we're employing them, and they don't have to live as we Framingham. They're investing in this community, they're buying homes, their children are going towards schools. So this is where this becomes the critical starting point for us as a community, is thinking about economic development. Without economic development, we are in a place of not relying on Framingham, but relying on others outside of Framingham. We have to start with relying on us in order to make it better. <laughs> You, I learned to speak the language of our corporate leaders by standing very close with my boss. <laughs> when you sit in a room and watch this guy ask somebody for two million dollars and not even flinch, <laughs> and have somebody actually say, I'm going to give you the two million dollars. <laughs> That's right. that is something, and one of the things I can honestly say. You know, he didn't just support me in this job, he sponsored me. He showed me how to lead and lead in a way to be fearless and not to be in a place of thinking that you're not out, uh, uh, if you're step outside of your comfort zone, that you stepped outside of the norm. And he made stepping outside of his comfort zone more. Yeah. And he taught me that. And I, I'm grateful for that. So those are the lessons I've learned and those are the relationships I've been able to cultivate in my job around the world. And I say around the world because I do travel around the world making those kinds of connections. So as I think about our economic development, my administration will go beyond our local borders to look at opportunities internationally because we can't limit ourselves on where that connection may come from. So I'll be looking not only here in Massachusetts, but throughout our country and throughout the borders of the United States, looking for those opportunities for innovative thinking to bring back to Framingham. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a little bit about preservation of our assets. As your mayor, I will fight to preserve our natural resources. We can't be punished. Um, there has been some work done to some of our uh, areas where we've had some challenges. Mary Denison Park, General Chemical, 350 Irving Street. I actually sat in a meeting yesterday with uh, uh, someone from the uh, Department of, of Preservation and, uh, and, with, and knew about Framingham and some of these situations. We have to be much more vigilant to make sure we don't have these situations going forward and allowing other entities to contribute to the damage of our community. We have to be much more vigilant, and I promise I will do that to preserve our community. So much <laughs> Education. My strong suit. <laughs> My very strong suit. And once again, they all work together. Without education, economic development, also in all of the other entities that happen within our community, preserving our spaces. We have to teach our children to be uh, stewards of our community. We have to also offer the best possible education for our children we can. And I promise you, I will work very closely with Dr. Tremblay and the newly elected school committee to ensure that our children are provided the best opportunities, and not some of our children, all of our children. Yeah. Our public safety. During the last couple of weeks, I've had a chance to travel and meet some of our leadership in town, and particularly the fire chief. And I talked to the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the police chief. And my goal is to learn as much as I can about some of the challenges they have and what are they needing from a mayor. I've also talked with our town manager 
and I spent some time in the southern part of our community learning a lot about some of our situations, opioid addiction, and how that impacts Framingham. Yes, our police is trained to administer Narcon and get people into facilities if they're willing to go. But we've got to tackle the problem before we get to the drug addiction. We've got to tackle depression, mental illness. These are things that are the impetus for drug addiction. And we have to do a much better job working closely with some of our social service agents in town in order to make sure that we're caring for all of our citizens. That is critically important for the health and safety of all of us. If we, if it's like each one has to be responsible for everyone. And so our city is not safe unless everybody is safe. And I also think as we look at the internal process, transparency. And as Erwin intimated, I don't know anybody anything. I'm not committed. I'm my own independent thinker. And part of that is also knowing how to have a voice for people without feeling like I am owed to uh, uh, ownership to somebody else's agenda. My agenda is about the people of Framingham. That is the agenda that I have. No other uh, uh, ulterior motive. All to be welcoming. I want it to be a place where you feel that you're not a guest, but you are part of this city hall. And that's something I will work very closely with our city and, uh, employees, which we, by the way, have some amazing people that work in the city. And so we'll look at ways in which we can be much more transparent. Make it a little easier for people to apply for licenses to open their business, make it a little more transparent so they understand the process, and there's opportunity for them to learn on how to manage their business. So looking at ways that we can be of much better service to the community and helping them build that capacity in this community to start new business, keep people enthusiastic about training them, and that there's not barriers, but there's nothing but bridges to bring them through. I've talked a little bit more about agenda items and those five key points. Driving our economy, critical, very critical. Thinking about preserving and protecting our environment. Education, community health and safety. And last but not least, improved operations and processes in our communications and town government. These are some five points, but there'll be more. Again, there'll be more to work on. But I also want you all to know, you are going to be a part of this process. You're not outside. I'm looking at tapping into the excellence in this community. And there's an awful lot of talent in this community. We are so fortunate that we do live in Frankie County. And part of that is thinking about the other issues that we have to address. I'm looking at thinking about task force that we don't have and thought leaders that we can tap into and really start to create a strategic plan for this community. My, my way of doing things and working with my team is like, if we've got a problem, I think like an engineer. Here's the problem. I'm going to look at multiple solutions to the problem. I'm going to implement a solution and know that once I implement a solution, there's a consequence. And you have to be willing to deal with the consequence. But we're all on the same page and it's going to be transparent. There is not going to be any hidden agenda in the process. Uh, it's really about making Framingham better every single year. This is a great place to be. We've done pretty well in 317 years. <laughs> and we can continue to do better, whether it be art, whether it be recreation, uh, good schools, clean, safe environment. That's what I want for Framingham. I will be the people's mayor representing all of Framingham. But I need each and every one of you to make that happen. I need you to vote on September 26th. I want you to tell everybody you know to vote. If they're not registered, get registered. Where's Norma Shulman? Norma will get you registered and make sure that we're here to vote. And I will leave you with one last thought. 
I was always taught it is better sometimes to be a blessing than to receive a blessing. And I've been blessed my whole life. And I've learned a lot and I've experienced a lot. My goal is to bring it home to Franklin where I've lived for 32 years, and where I continue, will continue to live, and I want to do that. I want to be the mayor. I want to be the people's mayor of Franklin County. Thank you.